Hey guys, Mike here with City Post. I'm here on site in Portland, Oregon today to film some tutorial videos. I get a lot of questions about how to do different aspects of the system, whether it be how to run cable for corners, how do I do stairs, how do I install top rail. So really the purpose of today is to make sure that you, the installer, the homeowner, have the best and most resources at your fingertips to make sure that you have the best information to do your project successfully the first time. So I get a lot of questions about the order of operations for the city post system. Step one is always going to be measure and install your posts. Make sure you didn't get too many, make sure you didn't get not enough. So you wanna lay those out and then you wanna install them. When we're going into concrete, we're gonna be providing you quarter inch by three inch concrete anchors. After that, we're gonna install the top rail. We're gonna make sure all of that gets done before we ever start looking at cable. You wanna make sure that the top rail is on so that when we do install the cables, when we start putting tension on the cables, we're not tempted to rip the posts out of the ground because you can generate an unbelievable amount of force with these cables and fittings. So when it comes down to the final measurement and cut for the handrail, it really comes down to what the homeowner or the customer's preference is. Typically what we do for an installation, if you take a look right down here, you'll see the edge of the bracket underneath the top rail, and we'll add anywhere from three to five inches to ensure a nice aesthetic look. So our next step in this is to actually make our final cuts on the top rail that we've already measured so that we can go and do the installation. Now, always remember when you're cutting, especially metals, you wanna make sure that you have the proper safety gear to ensure you don't get a shard of aluminum in your eye or, or anything like that, because it can happen. So we're gonna go ahead and put the ear protection on and do this cut. Quick pro tip for you, take some blue or green painter's tape and mark where the cut's gonna go to ensure we get a nice clean cut every time. And just like that, it's a nice simple cut. If you're not experienced with metal fabrication, we use a non-ferrous blade. Just go to Home Depot or Lowe's, any of your construction supply houses, and they have blades for chop saws made specifically for aluminum. What you're seeing here is the patented City Post top rail bracket. And what this does is it matches the pitch of whatever your stairs are to ensure that you're not having to do any metal fabrication in the field. Now this is our patent pending bracket and it's made out of injection molded polypropylene with 30% fiberglass fill. It's the most robust industrial plastic available today. So to install the aluminum top rail with the city post system, we provide one inch sheet metal screws and those are gonna go up from underneath through the city post patented top rail bracket and attach to the top rail. So you wanna center your top rail right over the top of the brackets there. So you get equal distance on either side. If we were gonna talk about an order of operations for installing the top rail over the bracket, if we started with this screw hole right here, the next obvious one would be diagonal from that to ensure that that top rail gets locked in place. So we are dealing with a construction project here. It's bound to happen that your drill might slip or you might nick the post or something like that. If that happens, just let us know. We can send you out a touch-up kit. It's fairly common, not a problem. So for this specific job, we're looking at aluminum top rail installation. City Post stocks and provides one by three aluminum tube for which we manufacture these transition fittings. This one specifically takes you from a horizontal to a stair run, and it goes in just like that. We also make them for horizontal upstairs. We make them for 90 degree angles, 45s, 22 and a halves, 11 and a quarters. So we have all the transition pieces you could ever need regardless of your layout. So we have half inch sheet metal screws that came with your transition fittings if you order top rail from us. like that. And we're going to slide the bottom piece right in there to ensure we have a nice proper fit. So as we finish up the top rail, there's a couple of things that I want to touch on. You'll notice that there's two holes at the top of each of the posts on the stairs. That's the very last thing that we're gonna do. Now, the reason that we're gonna do that last is we still need to be able to lift up this top rail in order to secure these two 
screws in place on the top rail bracket. So if we secure the top rail to the post, we're not gonna be able to do that. So we're gonna lift it up real quick, we're gonna hit those, set it back in, and we'll finish up the install. So you'll notice in your kit, you got a small bag of black oxide screws. They're inch and a quarter, and what those are gonna do is they're actually gonna go into the holes that we just pre-drilled into the bracket to secure this whole top rail assembly to our posts. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So the final step in the top rail installation is to plug the two ends with the end caps that we provide that came with your kit. So if you see right here, we already did this. These are PVC with UV inhibitors. Another pro tip here for you is the night before or the morning of your install, just take a few minutes and take all of your cable fittings like this and just unthread the actual stud from the pieces of hardware and you'll thank me later. This will save you a lot of time when you're actually getting ready to do the install. So now we're actually ready to start running cable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a bundle of cable that came in your kit and we're gonna cut the zip ties off and we're gonna start getting ready to actually put the fittings on. So from here, we're gonna take the cable and we're gonna grab one of our end fittings. We're gonna slide it on to the end of the cable as such and get ready for the crimp. So you'll notice there's a bunch of markings on the head here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the fitting into the 1 16th with the very bottom smallest hole. So now that the fitting is inserted into the hand swaging tool, what we do is we wanna make the crimp about a half to three quarters of an inch from the end of the fitting. <laughs> the first couple are pretty tough. It'll loosen up as you go though. Now that we've got the crimp done, we're ready to start running cable. When we're thinking about doing the cable installation, you really want to think about it like it's an assembly line. Do as many of the same tasks as much as you can before you move on to the next one. For this instance, we would run all of these cables like this. We'd get them cut at the right length, and then we'd come back and do the final fitting installation. So when we go to make our final cut on the cable, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the cable nice and tight, and then we're going to measure to the inside of the post about an eighth of an inch and we're gonna cut it right there. And for stairs, you're gonna to wanna to add three quarters to one inch on your cable. So now we're at the final step of the process, which is to actually tighten the cables that we've just installed. When you tighten the cables, you wanna think about it almost like a car tire, where you're gonna start in the middle, and they're gonna go up one, and then down one, up two, down two, to make sure that the whole system gets tensioned at the same time. So we're gonna start on the sixth cable, because that's right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab onto this fitting with my vice grip pair of pliers and with my wrench on the other side, I'm just gonna tension down this cable. Once it's nice and taut and there's no visible slag, that's when you know you're done. Now, a misnomer to cable rail systems is these cables do not need to be guitar string tight. They need to be tight enough where you get minimal play with them, but at about 100 pounds of pressure, you're good to go. So I started with six, and I'm gonna go up to five. And so on and so forth, until we have these cables tensioned right where we want them. Once you go through that one time, just hit them all to make sure that you didn't lose tension. If you did, hit it just a little bit more, and now we're ready for that thread locker. Now that our top rail is on, our cables are run and they're tight, there's only one thing for us left to do. We recommend taking some Loctite or thread locker of any kind and just putting a drip on the end of the threads right here before you thread the acorn nut on. Now you don't need to use a ton, a little bit of thread locker goes a long way. So we're going to take these guys and put the decorative nut on the end. And we're done. At City Post, we understand that exterior conditions can be tough. So we decided to, 
design and manufacture a system that are just as tough. All of our posts, standard, are carbon steel that are zinc plated and then powder coating. All of our powder coating is UV inhibited and guaranteed to withstand even the harshest conditions. Now, if you're in a marine climate, especially where there's a lot of salt water in the air, we recommend using our full stainless line, where not only are the cable and fittings gonna be 316 stainless, but our posts will be as well. We keep them in stock and we have them ready to ship now. Well, thanks for being here today. We sure hope that these videos were informative for you. We've done our best to try and walk you through some of our best practices that we've developed over the years. And if you ever have an idea or, or have something that you wanna see a tutorial on, don't hesitate, reach out to us. Call me at 855-GET-CITY. That's 855-G-E-T-C-I-T-Y. And we'd love to hear your thoughts and your opinions.